New Hope TV, your encounter with God. Dear friends, greetings to you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to speak about the seven words of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. My dear friend, I believe as you're going to hear this word, I believe your life is going to be transformed in the name of Jesus. The first word of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. If you could turn your Bible to Luke chapter 23 verse 34, the word clearly says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Dear friends, today I would like to tell you Jesus who paid on the cross of Calvary from Gethsemane to Golgotha he was being beaten up and he was being taken off so much of pain but still he never uttered a word my dear friend he bore every pain on the cross but on the cross he used a powerful word and a powerful statement he said forgive them for they do not know what they are doing my friend I would like to tell you see Jesus he was the greatest example I would define the forgiveness of God into three categories the first one he shows his love second one he's speaking about his healing third he is showing about his compassion dear friends today I would like to remind each and every one of you the forgiveness of God was to us it's because to show his love to give us healing and to be compassionate hallelujah and today if you're suffering with pain and if you don't have the nature of forgiveness today let Christ be an example in your life like Christ today forgive each other live with unity live with harmony my dear friend you see all those people who are there they, they were really they were laughing at him mocking at him but Jesus still said that word forgive them Lord for they do not know what they are doing my dear friend such a great heart if somebody does something for us we are not ready to forgive them we will try to take a revenge back at them but see Jesus he was the greatest example he showed his love and he said, Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, my dear friend. The second word, what Jesus spoke on the cross of Calvary. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. We see the two thieves on the cross of Calvary. One thief was mocking at Jesus. He was laughing at Jesus. But another thief had a realization. Another thief says to Jesus, Lord, when you are entering into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus says straight away to him, today you shall be with me in paradise. What a power word my dear friend what a great example that Jesus for us you see even the thief on the cross had a remission of sin there he had a forgiveness of sin and Jesus takes him to heaven hallelujah it means he takes him to paradise and he says today you shall be with me in paradise my dear friend see on those days we see why they give a cross to a person for a criminal only they give a cross Jesus was not a criminal today I would like to tell you my dear friend this innocent man was put on the cross but the two thieves they did robbery they did everything they deserve it but even for those fellows Jesus was ready to forgive because one fellow was not ready but the guy who was ready to accept Christ he got that forgiveness today I would like to tell you today if you could forgive if you could ask Jesus Lord forgive me today I would like to tell you you have a new life you have a new hope in life hallelujah because God is a God who is a God of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Even on the cross, he forgave him and he took him to the paradise, my dear friend. Today, I would like to tell you, no matter what is that sin today, if you could open your heart to Jesus and say to Jesus, Lord, forgive me. I tell you, today you have a new life. What a great God who exaggerated, who showed his true love for us on the cross of Calvary. The third verse, Jesus said, Dear woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. In John chapter 19, verse 26 and 27, we see them. He says to his mother, he says, dear woman, here is your son. He handovers this mother to his disciples. See the responsibility what Jesus has got, my dear friend. Many a times, we don't have the responsibility to take care of our parents. Jesus, even on the cross of Calvary, he fulfilled the purpose what he was being sent for. As a human, 
he did his duty as a God he fulfilled his purpose hallelujah and today I would like to tell you Jesus was a great example for us see that he says to his disciples take this is your mother even even he never left the disciples there he gave a wonderful mother there hallelujah what a great God we see there my dear friend many years ago I have I visited one of the orphanages uh, to go and to pray for them and to do some needful work in that orphanage as I went there I could see one mother in that orphanage and that mother after all the uh, after the meetings and the program was over she ran to me and she started crying I asked her mother what happened tell me what is your problem she said brother in my young age I lost my husband as the days went, I took care of my son. I have a holy son. I did everything what I should do. I did the best thing what I could give to him. I did everything. I was grown up that I have to do the wedding. I finished the wedding for him. Everything was going on well. And after a few days, he said, Mom, I have to take a loan. Why don't you transfer this house into my name? I transferred the house into his name. And one day, slowly, he constructed a small room and he said, Mom, you stay here because there's small misunderstandings between me and my wife. And after a few days, he said, you get out of this house itself. And he put me on the streets. Now I have come to this orphanage and I'm living here. My dear friend, I would like to tell you, see this guy, inhuman fellow. What he did for his mother will be repeated to him. But one thing I would like to tell you, see, it's our duty. It's a bounding duty to take care of our parents. And sometimes we don't do that. It is a sin and abomination to God. Today I would like to tell you, even Christ on the cross of Calvary, he fulfilled his purpose, what he has to do to his mother. And today, those who are watching at me, I would like to tell you, take care of your dear parents. Give them what they need. Bless them. What a great God. He's a great example and a role model for us, my dear friend. We see the fourth verse. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus on the cross of Calvary. So much of pain, he took everything on the cross of Calvary, my friend. Everything, a man who was standing all alone, was crying to the Father and saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Really, I would like to tell you, is his Father in heaven forsaken him? No, my friend. We see in Psalm 22, verse 1, thousand years ago, David says like this, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Before the crucifixion of Christ, before the coming of Christ himself, David already says this prophecy that Jesus will die on the cross of Calvary. And to fulfill that word, as it says in Matthew, Jesus came to fulfill all the promises which was been already foretold. Hallelujah. Whatever it was been foretold by the great servants of God, the prophets, Jesus came to fulfill. I would like to tell you, a man who's standing all alone, taking all that pain, the agony, his body was broken and beaten. His blood was oozing out. It was for our sake, my friend. He bore every pain that you and I will be free and that you and I will see the deliverance of God. And today I would like to tell each and every one of you that the Father in heaven was with God. Hallelujah. He never left him, but he wanted to fulfill what was being foretold by the prophets. The fifth word, it says, what he said on the cross of Calvary. I am thirsty. John 19, 28, it says, I am thirsty. Why Christ was thirsty? Today I would like to tell you, he's thirsty for souls. Even on the cross, he was thirsty that so many people are going to get perished who really don't know that I am the true living God. I am the Messiah who have come to save this people, my friend. Today, even after we know in the truth of Christ, we are many a times not aligning our life with Christ, not aligning with the spiritual uh, lifestyle. We are not aligning with the, the words of God in our life. We are not aligning to the Bible, the biblical word of God. Many a times we are going out of the track, my friend. Today, I would like to tell you, Jesus is thirsty for the souls, even on the cross of Calvary. Until today, he's thirsty. He's interceding for us. That's some or the other way that we will be saved and we will enter into the glory of God. My friend, today I would like to tell you, he's thirsty for you. If you are in that secret sin, if you're caught up with all things of evil, bad attitudes, bad thoughts, bad ideas, jealousy, pride, ego, lies, come out of it because Jesus is thirsty for you because he wants you to enter into the kingdom. Many people say, is there really heaven? There is really hell. I would like to tell you, there is a heaven. 
and Jesus is the only way to heaven my friend there is heaven and hell and I would like to really tell you who follow the precepts of Jesus and who accepts Christ as a personal savior has eternal life to heaven because the Bible says and my word says that Jesus is only the way to heaven and today I tell you if you can forgive and if you could say God forgive my sins wash me with your blood I Lord I want you I tell you he is thirsty that you will enter into the kingdom of God hallelujah the Bible very clearly says the way to heaven is very narrow and way to hell is very broad my friend and today why don't you enter into that narrow gate to heaven so that you will have an eternal life you will have a blessing on this beautiful day of Good Friday I would like to tell you our good God is thirsty for you hallelujah and he loves you more than anything hallelujah verse 6 he says it is finished I love this word it is finished what did he finish on the cross of Calvary? John 19, 30, he says it's finished, hallelujah. It means he finished everything. He took all our curse, he took all our pain on the cross of Calvary. It means he fulfilled his purpose, what he was being sent by the Father in heaven, hallelujah. He walked on the streets of Galilee, he healed the blind, the lame, the sick, hallelujah. He rebuilt all the broken walls. He raised up prophets, he raised up teachers. He, he brought the 12 disciples together. He taught them what was the real truth my friend and they were spread across and they started preaching the gospel he did everything what he has to do and not only that the main plan of Christ that he should die and shed his blood so that we will have a, a remission of sin and this plan was being fulfilled and that's the reason why he said I have finished everything my friend today if anything is unfinished in your life today I would like to tell you God is going to give a new beginning to the unfinished things in your life hallelujah this very second make a commitment make a vow to Christ Lord today I give myself as a living sacrifice and say God you're a my oh God you have come to finish what was unfinished in my life and I challenge you in the name of Jesus, the ones who are watching me, I would like to tell you that your life will never be the same because he is a God who will finish everything. Hallelujah. He's a complete God. Amen. The seventh word on the cross of Calvary. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. As it says in Luke 23, 46. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. What a word is this? He did everything he finished and finally says, Father, I give my spirit into your hands again. I have finished what I have to do and now I'm ready to enter into your glory. What a great God, my friend. Are you committed in the works what you do? Are you committed what, they have, what the Lord has given to you? Many a times we are breaking our commitments, even in our jobs, in our personal lives, even in our relationships. In every manner, we are not committed, but Jesus was committed. He completed everything what was given to him. And he said, now I commit my spirit into you, Lord. My dear viewers who are watching me, today I would like to tell you a very key factor is committing our spirit to God is a key for everything in our life. Today, is your spirit committed to the worldly pleasure? Is your life craving for the worldly desires? Today I would like to tell you, the flesh will give fleshly desire, but the spirit will give the spiritual desires. Hallelujah. The spiritual desires will make you happy and it will keep you in contend with what you have. Hallelujah. But the worldly desires will always keep you as an incomplete person. Today, why don't you commit your spirit into the hands of God? Many a times our mouth is committed, our heart is not committed. Many a times our eyes is not committed, our ears are not committed. Because till now we are seeing all the unwanted things, filthy things in our eyes. We are hearing all the secular music, unwanted things in our ears. Today my friend, if you are committed to God, your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Just don't look for a material blessings. Many people think prosperity is material blessings. I would like to tell you, material blessings are nothing. It will all vanish away. The Bible says a day will come, not a stone will stand on another stone. And these are those days, we are in the last days. Why don't you commit your life to Jesus? As, as Jesus himself committed his spirit finally to the Father in heaven. Why don't you commit your life to the Lord Jesus and say, Father God, today I have heard the seven words which were said on the cross of Calvary. 
My dear friend, if you think about the cross, we remember the seven words of Christ, such a powerful words. Every word was an example for us and he was a role model for us, Christ. Today, on this beautiful Good Friday, you know why the meaning of a Good Friday, of a good God paid it so that we will have a complete freedom from sin. And today, if you're stuck with all kinds of evil, with all the pride, the ego, the jealousy, the arrogance, my friend, and if you're caught up in this world, today is the greatest opportunity for you. Today, the world is not able to give a solution for the problems what the world is going through. They are not able to find a medicine for such a big coronavirus. So many things are going. They're trying to find out things, but they are not able to find an answer for it. I would like to tell you, there is only one answer. Jesus is the answer for all our problems. My dear friend, today, whatever might be that pain, the agony, what you are going through, the world is a very big question. They do not know what to do, where to go about. People are scared. The economy is trashed. It's not only in our nation. Globally, the economy is gone. People are scared. What's going to be the, the next future? Are they going to be in the jobs? Are their life is going to be insecure? Are they going to be sacked out of the jobs? So many things are running in them. One thing I would like to tell you, Jesus is the answer for all your problems. He said that beautiful word, sixth word, it's finished. He said that word, it's finished. It means he took everything of your sins on the cross of Calvary. Today, give your life to this wonderful King of Kings and Lord of Lords who shed his precious blood. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our deliverer. Today, if you can give your life to Jesus, he will make you a, a new person and you're going to have a new hope in life. I tell you, whatever might be that situation, God is going to change it. Hallelujah. Why don't you give your heart to Jesus? Today, if you give your heart to Jesus, Jesus is going to come inside you and he's going to give you a new life. Hallelujah. Why don't you stretch forth your hands towards this wonderful television and say this prayer after me. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give my body, my soul, my spirit into your hands and care. I am a sinner, Lord. I heard this word, Lord, that you died for us on the cross of Calvary. You shed your precious blood for me, Jesus. On the third day, you rose again. Father, cleanse me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for washing all my sins, oh God. Thank you for coming into my heart. Jesus, right at this moment, I give my body, my soul, my spirit into your hands and care. From today, I will live for you. I will run for you. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, I strongly believe that Jesus has come inside your heart and he's going to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Hallelujah. Are you happy today? I'm so happy and excited because your soul has been saved and it's going to go into the glory of God. Hallelujah. Because you will become a citizen of heaven from this very second. Hallelujah. And today, at this very moment, I'm going to pray for you. Are you suffering with sickness, with pain, with agony? You're not able to walk. You're not able to do anything. Don't worry. We have a great God. We have a great Jesus. He's our healer. He's our restorator. The Bible says, by his wounds, we have been healed. In 1 Peter 2, 24. And Isaiah 53, 5 says, by his stripes, we have been healed. Mark 10, 27 says, nothing is impossible by God. What is impossible by man is possible by God. Hallelujah. And today, I would really believe, and I strongly believe, at this very second, as I'm going to pray for you, you're going to walk out of the dead prayer. Hallelujah. Wherever you're watching, maybe you are in that ICU, maybe you are in that hospital, maybe you are in that house crying to God for a miracle and I believe the healing power of Jesus, the resurrection power of Jesus, the wounds of Jesus, the stripes of Jesus will heal you right now. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Heavenly gracious Father, I pray for all the ones who are watching today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless them Lord. You will heal them Lord. I pray oh God, whatever is that sickness, the pain, the agony they are going through right at this moment, in the name of Jesus that they will be healed 
healed, oh Father. I pray for the ones who are in the hospitals, the ICUs, people who are suffering. In the name of Jesus, let thy healing wings flow in them, oh Father. Let them rise up and walk in Jesus' name, oh Father. Lord, the ones who are broken families, ones who are crying for a supernatural miracle, you will heal them, Lord Jesus, right at this moment. I pray that the healing wings of Jesus will come upon them, that you will bless them, Lord. Lord, rebuild all the broken families of God, because you are the God, oh Father, who can rebuild the broken walls, oh Father. I pray for every home that who are, oh God, looking for a miracle, for the financial miracle, for the, oh God, material blessings, physical mental blessings, spiritual blessings. Lord, you bless them, Lord, oh Father. From today, I declare peace in the homes, oh God. I declare joy in the homes, oh Father. Lord, whatever they are lacking, Lord, let them, oh God, have a multiplication and let them have an increase in their homes, oh Father. Bless each and every one. Thank you for your awesome presence. Thank you for touching them and making them whole, oh Father. I give you glory. I give you honor, oh Father. Thank you for healing each and every one, oh Father. I know that you are going to do something beautiful in the life. I give you glory, honor, all the best praises. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my dear friends. And I believe that Christ has given you a new life. From today, you want to see the goodness of the Lord in your life. God bless you.